Hi guys, it's Debbie from HealingFromBPD.org and today I'm going to be talking about being emotionally sensitive or what some may call dramatic or overreactive. They may not understand what it's like to be someone who has emotion regulation issues or to be extremely emotional by society standards or by the normal standard perhaps. My friend and I were talking the other day on the, um, basically I was sitting there watching TV recently and hormones were involved and things like that, but even when they're not, things like this happen to me. I was watching TV and the TV commercial came on for Cheerios where the little boy talks about his Nana. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it, but if you put in Cheerios and Nana onto YouTube, I'm sure you'll find it. And basically... I was watching the commercial and I knew it was going to be one of those give you the warm and fuzzies and I like that kind of stuff. I was ball. <laughs> After that commercial. And luckily I was home alone at the time. Because <laughs> there have been times when like my significant other or a roommate or a family member or a neighbor, whatever, have heard me or seeing me in that kind of a state after seeing something on TV or even hearing something on the radio and they'll be like, are you okay? What just happened? Are you alright? Like, what's going on? And it's like, there's a commercial about a little boy and Cheerios in it and they're just like, oh my god. And a lot of times this has happened with my significant other and, and or with a friend or somebody, I'm even, you know, just out and about and something will really move me emotionally and in the past, to be honest with you, it would get really out of control, like the crying and sobbing from the Cheerios commercial. <laughs> if this had been a couple of years ago, then that would have gone on to me getting really depressed about missing my own Nana and freaking out thinking about existential questions and thinking about death and all these crazy things that aren't so crazy because they're part of life, but it would like take me into dark places or get me really anxious or get me spiraling emotionally. Whereas now, I literally do this to myself with compassion and love. I, I have my boundary bubble up. I have a whole video about the boundary bubble. I'll put a link to this if you're watching this on YouTube. It'll be right underneath the video or wherever they're putting the information these days. But I do that and I, and I talk to my inner child and I'll literally say something like, Stop it, Debbie. Stop it right now. And not in a mean way, not in a vicious way, but in a way that I would say to a friend or a child that I really loved that when I, if I were trying to get them to come into the present moment and stop freaking out so that they would not totally get completely dysregulated, I do that for myself now. So while I was the brief reaction, emotional reaction to the commercial, which obviously was designed to elicit emotions and to, to touch your heart. I mean, the woman in the commercial is like getting all choked up, the actress. I mean, it's intended to stimulate emotions. But when you're an incredibly emotionally sensitive person, um, it can start out to where you're having a reaction and, and then it becomes more intense and you're starting to think about things from the past and this is chain reaction that keeps on going. So there's a, time, there's a point in time when you have to intervene and get yourself regulated and that's what I wanted to bring to the table today is it is possible to do that. The other thing is other people may not understand. They may say things like, and I've said this in previous videos before, but like, I can't believe you're reacting that much to that. It's just a commercial. It's just this. It's just... I was talking to Alicia Paz, who's working on a guest piece for the Healing from BPD.org blog about this, but evidently, and I've heard this before, and we'll get some more information on it, your, our brains do not always uh, decipher between what they're seeing on television or hearing on the radio and between what's really happening in reality. So someone who has a trauma history or who has PTSD and that sort of a thing, when they are exposed to, like, let's say, violence on TV or something really sad and emotional on TV or really sad song, can be triggered uh, so much more deeply than someone who doesn't have a trauma history. So there'll be more information coming up about that on the blog. So watch for that. That'll be in September. I'll keep you posted. Uh, but basically, it may be hard for other people to understand, but they haven't walked in your shoes. They don't know what it's like to be an incredibly emotionally sensitive person. There are tons of skills that you can use. Just look for DBT skills over at the blog 
and uh, also check in with your peers over at the Healing from BPD Facebook page and also the BPD Friends community on Twitter is incredibly supportive. If you put a question out there and tag it with BPD Friends, you're likely to get some answers and support. You can also put my handle in it so that I see it and I can even retweet it to the community so that more people will be able to find your question. If you're dealing with things like this or other BPD related issues or questions about DBT, that sort of thing. I also want you to be encouraged because Amanda Smith, who runs My Dialectical Life, which is a daily DBT email service, recently had a quote in one of her daily emails from Marsha Linehan, the founder of Dialectical Behavior Therapy, or DBT. And it was something along the lines of, I don't remember the exact quote, but it was something like, even people who are cured or who overcome BPD and no longer meet the criteria will still be very creative, animated, dramatic people out in the world. You know, and that doesn't mean that you're having a relapse, it doesn't mean that uh, there's anything wrong with you. You may feel intensely. The world needs people that can feel and that who, who have compassion and who care because those kind of kinds of feelings and emotions motivate us to make a difference and to make change and to do things that matter because everything we do matters and has ripple effects. Every interaction, every smile, everything we do. Check out on the healingfrombpd.org Facebook page. In recent uh, weeks there was a post that I put up about a video on YouTube that has over 7 million hits called Validation. It's just so moving. You'll see what I mean after you check it out. So if you're feeling like, you know, you're having emotion regulation issues, whether you have BPD or not, or you're in recovery, or you're dealing with anxiety, tap into those tools. Maybe consider talking to your inner child, giving yourself that guidance and wisdom that you need. Tap into that wise mind, that adult person inside who does have it together. There is that piece, that part in you that needs to be on call and called forward when having these types of episodes to say, stop it Michelle, or stop it Danielle, or stop it Scott, or stop it Michael, or stop it Debbie. Acknowledge the feelings, but just kind of say, halt, halt. <laughs> you know, how far do I want to take this? I want to feel my emotions. I have a right to feel them. I understand why I'm having this reaction. I can also tame it down a little bit so that it's not something that, that makes me feel sick. So hopefully that makes sense. Thank you so much for watching and reading over at healingfrombpd.org and on this YouTube channel. And just love yourself. Try to release the judgment about being an overly, according to society, intensely emotional person because it's just part of who you are and it can be a beautiful thing. And as long as you uh, modulate it and regulate it so that you're not getting yourself overwhelmed and not feeling well over it, and using the tools, then there's a way to work that part of your life into the great. Thanks again. Again, I'm Debbie, and I will see you in the next video or in the next blog post. Take care until then. Bye-bye.